So, Shay, this is a, a very unusual uh, situation that we've got coming up on Saturday. I mean, there have been former players, alums on the other end of the bench, but you got your husband. What's that going to be yeah. like? Um, I think, you know, like any other game, um, him and I, we try to separate our, our professional and our personal lives as best we can. Obviously, we're, it's nice to have someone at home that's supportive. Um, he is an amazing coach. He's very, very good at what we do at our profession. So I've learned a lot from him and it's been fun to watch him grow into this uh, most recent head coaching position that he has. I'm so happy for him. His team had a, had a great year last year, unfortunately cut short, like, um, like all of us, but um, it's, it's, it's going to be difficult in a way, just, I, you know, <laughs> I want him to do well. I want us to do well. And that's, you know, I guess that could be done both ways, but um, someone's gonna gonna leave disappointed. <laughs> That's the reality. But um, but I am so proud of of what he's been able to accomplish. I'm so excited to be on the court, you know, with him, with him there. I'm excited to see his team play. I'm excited to see our team play. I think Saturday is going to be a big day all the way around, and um, and it's and if we get a, a game in and they get a game in at this point, to me, that's a win. Shay, what have you liked about the guard so far, the guard play from your team with the mix that you have? Um, you know, we have a great mix of, of really good guard play. Um, all of our guards have something different um, to bring to the table. We have some youth, obviously, but I think, you know, there's a, a spunkiness and some energy about our young guys that I really love um, and that's helped kind of get us through some of these tougher periods and, and I think also get our team through some of the tough periods. We have incredible amount of talent um, and skill, but you know, I'll be interested to see because we haven't played yet. Um, what exactly are, are the things that they're going to bring to the table when it comes to games? What exactly are the things that that they do under the under the lights and what are the things that we need to get better at you know that's what practice is for but we've been practicing for a very long time there's always going to be something to improve on i want to see what they do in a game situation but i'm really excited about the group they complement each other well um and it'll be fun to, to watch them suit up for the first time So, how did the game with UMass Lowell come about? Was there a dinner conversation? Hey, we could both use a game. I'm just interested how it came about. Well, you know, I know people there. Um, but no, I uh, actually, I was leaving the office one day and um, one of our administrators was in the hallway and uh, we were talking about how we had lost games. And I said, you know, my husband just lost another game too. I'm literally walking past him. I wasn't even part of the conversation. Um, and and I'm, as I'm leaving, I'm not looking at him. He was like, well, ask him if he wants to play us. I was like, really? He's like, yeah. So I went home and he was watching a basketball game. And I just sat on the couch. I was like, hey, you want to you play us? They wanted me to ask you. And he was like, sure, we, we can do that. So, I mean, it was literally like a two sentence conversation at home. And, um, you, you know, my husband, he's, He's a great guy. And he, you know, when you guys talk to him, you'll, you'll see he, he is a man of few words in terms of like what, when he says something, he really means it. So he didn't even hesitate. And he said, sure, we'd love to do that. You know, I want to show our kids um, what's possible and what we want to be here at UMass. Well, obviously in their conference, I mean, they're not, they're not a, a major division one conference, but he wants them to be winners. And so I, I thought that was, um, that was a cool answer. And then I was excited to go back and say, Hey, this, this might work. So. And, and then do you talk about the game since then or is it more quiet and you both go your separate ways and have your own thoughts about the game? I mean, we jab at each other, like, you know, not a lot, um, but we, we're never like that. I, we don't bring our work home um, a whole bunch. We talk about different conceptual things and, um, you know, he'll, he'll show me a bunch of stuff with NBA players that he thinks that, um, you know, players of ours that are older or, Hey, you know, um, do you still talk to Katie Lou? Send her this clip. She should be, you know, she should, this move would be a good move for her and the pros. And um, because, you know, he played professionally for so long. So um, we talk about things like that. But when it comes to day to day stuff or now that we're playing each other, I have it on our family calendar, but that's it. 
<laughs> it's up there on our calendar, but um, it's not something that we talk about daily. Mm -mm. Hey, Jeff Jacobs, uh, two questions. One, will your little one be at the game and what will she be wearing, uh, UMass Lowell garb or UConn garb? And also you brought up, uh, piggyback on a, uh, a comment you, you made. You said you learned some things about coaching from your husband. Yeah. You've been in the game a long time and I was kind of wondering if you could be kind of specific in, in that area. Sure. So first of all, I would love, I, I think if any game that, uh, I could have brought Mace into, I would have loved to brought her the, this game, but with the restrictions um, and how early we have to be here, the fact that I need somebody to take care of her, but we can't, I can't get anybody into our building here. It just makes it impossible. Um, and so, no, long answer to your question is no, we, we can't, we're not going to be able to get May made to this game, but I'm hoping to bring her to one in the future. I just have to iron it out. Um, and it's not, it's, it's really not a priority right now for our team is to figure out how to get my daughter to a game. So hopefully soon, but you won't see her at, at the game on Saturday. In terms of what I've learned from my husband, I think, you know, we're very similar in a lot of ways when it comes to our work ethic and our drive. Um, we're very different in that I'm much more high strung than he is. Um, and he's much more laid back. So, you know, there will be th some times where I'll be very frustrated with a certain player that's not getting better at something or frustrated for, with myself for not figuring something out. Or, you know, even if we're just looking at a play, um, he's, he's had so much basketball experience at the, at the highest level that sometimes, you know, when I'm looking for this answer that I think should be a difficult one, it's much more simple than that. And my husband just has a way of delivering information um, and I can see him doing that as a head coach with his players. It's very short and simple, precise and to the point, and it makes perfect sense. And so for me, I think he's made me better in that he's just made me more uh, even keeled and patient as a coach. And, you know, I've always been like, you guys know, you guys watch me play. And that's how I coached a lot early on in my career. I think um, one thing that I've learned from my husband is that, you know, it's not always about being so high strung and so high energy, that's important, but it's also important to show some um, calmness in moments where everybody else is that way, you know, and, and you need to kind of show a little bit of calmness. And sometimes the answer is right there in front of your face. And technically he's one of the best coaches I've, I've ever had a conversation with. You know, I know he's my husband, I know I'm biased, but we were friends for a long time before, um, before we came together as a couple. And I learned a lot from him in that friendship just in terms of player development, X's and O's. Um, I just enjoy talking about the game with him. He's very smart. <laughs> he is, don't tell him I said that because I will totally deny it. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> You're welcome. I should have so done with uh, Hearst Connecticut Media. Just curious, what was the coaching staff able to do? You know, what did you accomplish during these last um, two weeks? You know, uh, obviously the players weren't you know, you weren't working out with them, but what were you able to accomplish? I mean, I, you know, that's a, such a loaded question because uh -huh. there's so much that we want to get done. But to me, you know, we've had to recalibrate our expectations a little bit. And obviously we have to prepare and there's things that we need to get done. And we talk about those things, but just, I find an accomplishment at this point to be on the court. So we've been on the court for a couple of weeks and that was an accomplishment. We've had to get our players back in, a, in shape. You know, in some ways we had some kids banged up. It was good to, to sit out, but I mean, it's been so choppy. I mean, we haven't played a game yet. <laughs> you know, it's, it's mid-December. So I think the fact that we're on the court every day is an accomplishment and it, it's something that um, feels good to be down on the floor with the players, to be able to work with them, to talk about a potential game, which was another reason that it was, you know, for us, it was important to get a game before the 15th, if we could, so that our kids could suit up and play in a game. Um, so our expectations, you know, as a coaching staff, we've really had to evolve. And um, it's, it's obviously we're doing it um, and, and our players are doing it and, and we're giving it our best shot, but it's been a difficult thing to navigate um, because we've been here for so long and we still haven't played a game. So um in terms of technical stuff, I mean, it's, it's hard to say. I think we're getting better, but we need to compete for us to really see where some of our deficiencies still lie. You see them in practice, but that's not out of the ordinary every year, not, no matter how good your team is. I want to see us play a game, 
And, um, and then we can talk about, you know, how much better have we gotten in practice over this period of time? We have time for one or two more questions. Hi, Shay, this is Charlotte Carroll from The Athletic. Hi. What have you seen from Avina the last couple of months and then I guess the last couple of weeks heading into uh, her first UConn game? Um, you know, nothing, nothing really different than um, we talked a couple months ago about the, you know, the kind of energy that Ia is going to bring. She has some experience that some of our younger guys who, who also haven't played a game in a UConn uniform don't have in terms of, you know, she's already played college basketball at a high level. Avina brings an edge to our team. You guys will see she's very, uh, she's, there's a competitive edge, a toughness about her that I think has been a really great thing for our team. Um, and I think that she'll bring that, you know, I, I know that she's really excited to play. Um, she, she, there's a vocal leadership about her that's been fun and you'll probably be able to hear it because there won't be many people in the stands. Um, but there's a lot about what Avina brings to the court that we haven't had in that way. Um, in a couple of years, she just has, you know, there's a certain real edginess about her that I think we've needed. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm anxious to see how that translates to the court when we play. But, you know, she has that. And that's something that's different, um, especially with this team now. And, and she provides a leadership role in that way for us, which is really cool. If I could follow up quickly um, off of Charlotte Sabina question, uh, she, she had mentioned a few months ago that you had uh, been a confidant or advisor or mentor as she's been coming back from her knee injuries, um, given your own history. Um, have you just seen her embrace that process and really just come back stronger and um, could go through all that, what she has been through over the last, uh, I guess it's been almost a year at this point since her last surgery. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Avina, Avina has done everything you want a kid to do when she's faced with a, um, a scenario that she was faced with. I mean, she's, she's tackled it head on. She stayed up here all summer, you know, I mean, and everyone, we, everyone is completely isolated. Avina was completely isolated, but she stayed up here because she wanted an opportunity to play if we had a season and she knew she needed to do that, to be here, to do that. Um, embracing it, she, she has, but that doesn't mean that there aren't hard days, hard weeks. I mean, you know, she, this isn't something that's going to go away for her. She feels very lucky to be on the court, but it's, it's hard work and it's hard work to stay on the court when you have something that she's had done. So that's a continuing thing that she's going to have to learn. She hasn't played in a season. She hasn't played in, you know, tournaments where you're playing back to back to back games and you have to learn how to manage that. So, you know, all of us, you know, our team, our staff, our training staff will be there to help support her, but that's, you know, that's going to be a thing that she evolves into. And I think one of the reasons I believe that she'll be okay and that she'll be, continue to get better is because she is so tough. What I talked to you about before, she has an edginess that you really need to be able, I mean, to get through this. And I, I know that. <laughs> and I laugh with her because I tell her whatever I did, you know, you should probably do the exact opposite because I, <laughs> I was hurt for a while and ended my career hurt. So, um, but I, I always believe, and I still believe that your attitude when you're faced with something like that is everything. You have a choice every day to make. Um, you may have a bad day physically, but mentally it's a great day if you can be out on the court. Emotionally, it's a great day if you can be out on the court because you understand when you're in a Venus position, when you're in my position, that, you know, she just went two years without being out on the court. You don't, I mean, that's hard, guys. And that's, that's your passion just taken right out from underneath you. So I'm excited for her. Um, I'll always be there for her, but she has, she still has some learning and, and growing to do through that. And um, I'm confident that she will. Thank you.